Hi. Let's understand some of the data science components which are relevant for product managers. So the first thing I want to talk about is uh, data science constructs which will help you in describing something versus predicting something. Okay. So in dis in description uh, or descriptive analytics, uh, you'll typically have data existing data the objective is to evaluate and optimize the design or the performance okay and you'll get the data you'll do the analysis and you'll get the answer okay because the descriptive is is happening on the data which already uh, on the data that has already happened and you're just trying to describe what has happened okay well in predictive you're trying to predict what can happen okay so in descriptive you'll take the data do some analysis and get the answer. Typically nowadays, most of the uh, most of the tools of the trade they are very smart, and that's why uh, doing analytics on top of it is much much simpler. Okay, some of the tools that you can do uh, that you can use to describe a certain certain observation is A/B test. You can do hypothesis testing. You can do descriptive statistics. You can do charts. You can do graphs. You can do plenty of other things. And on the other hand, the predictive analytics, you are trying to predict what can happen. And for that, you will take the data in, you will do some analysis, you will do the modeling of how do you perceive the future to look like or how you perceive the future uh, users to be using the product. And then you verify it using some small experiment and then you answer and you get, then you get the answer. The objective on this predictive analytics is to forecast. You, you are trying to forecast user behavior, user preferences, user taste or each one of them or all of them and the tools available to your disposal are predictive models regression and decision trees i'll recommend that you google this out and read a little bit more about this to give an idea of the power of a b testing so design optimization optimization via a b testing back in obama days obama 08 um, was a massive success and he ended up raising about 60 million dollars by running a simple experiment which has been very carefully very nicely articulated in a in a link which is uh, given in the speaker notes i strongly recommend that you go through the entire article it gives a fantastic overview of how exactly uh, uh, a b testing can be used uh, for benefit by a product manager To give an example of taste forecasting for predictive analytics, Netflix, like in early days, had a very, very famous challenge where the challenge was, can you improve our recommendation engine by 10%? If you do that, you will get to, uh, th then you win the $1 million challenge, right? Whosoever improves their, their recommendation engine by 10%, will get $1 million. That was a challenge and it was it lasted for some decent time. And you can see here uh, the number one pragmatic theory. <laughs> uh, they were able to uh, you know beat uh, they were able to pretty much beat or they came very close to beating uh, the meeting the 10% challenge. Right. In the speaker notes I have three links which talk about exactly this. Uh, challenge and the third one the third predictive analytics uh, uh, outcome is preference forecasting and there was a very interesting article and uh, on how target was able to figure out a teen girl was pregnant before her father did okay and that was purely based on what kind of products was a uh, what kind of products was a teen girl ordering um, and it was a controversial reveal. There's plenty of material that is written about them, about this entire scenario. Uh, there's a very, uh, there's a, there's a good link in the speaker notes about describing this in detail. So all of these three things, which is preference forecasting, taste forecasting, and design optimization via A/B testing, all of these are possible via uh, the tools at your disposal, with the descriptive analytics or predictive analytics. Right. So what is a data science framework for product managers? This is my eight step framework that I'll recommend. You define your objective, 
that is you define what is the problem what do you want to accomplish you define success so how do you know that you met your objective how does success look like how do you measure it quantitatively then you define what data you need what variables factors or models support your objectives then you define and carry out strategies to collect data so how do you get it where do you get it when do you get it okay and then you model the data you verify the analysis and modeling and then finally determine how you will integrate results into your process or decision making the technical skills required here is data mining statistics regression analytics uh, uh, and advanced mathematics but yeah unless and until you are in a company which is heavy duty data driven and you uh, you are directly plugged into that exactly that product you do not need to know all of this you just need to know how to use it and how to uh, how to use it and how does it work okay you just need to know this, those those things you don't need to understand how data mining exactly works how uh, the statistics itself is a big like people people spend their lives learning statistics so you can't learn completely but you just need to learn enough uh, concepts that will be useful for your day to day life this is a great video where uh, you know uh, where an airbnb data scientist explains why data analytics is key for product managers uh, it's a longish video i'll strongly recommend that you go through it uh, we'll give you a good sense of what does uh, a data driven product manager do in a day-to-day -day life so what are the tools of the trade there are quite a lot of them and it starts right from as simple as uh, google sheets to excels to you know heavy duty stuff so which tools matter to PMs? Well, Google Sheets and regular Excel Sheets work to some extent. You may take up R and Python for some basic analysis. If you belong to the I don't need anyone camp, as you want to do everything by yourself, you can take up R and Python to do something. But uh, don't be scared. You don't need to do it. And then there is Tableau, ClickSense and similar tools. All of these tools will help you analyze the data. But how will you get the data? Well, usually MySQL, okay, you will use MySQL or MongoDB, uh, MySQL is a database and MongoDB is also a database, uh, to generalize from relational or non-relational databases. So relational databases example would be MySQL and uh, they work very similar to Excel sheets that they have rows and columns or non-relational databases which work pretty much like a linked lists. So there is lists of data grouped together. So, yep, you need to know how to query on databases. That is something a must do and we will be covering that in one of the later units. So, I will give you a fair introduction comparison between the various tools. The tool falls in discovery, analysis, which is qualitative and quantitative and finally reporting. So, discovery is what happened basically. So, you need a certain tool which will help you understand what happened. That's it. Google Analytics does a fantastic job at this place but only in this place. It just tells you what happened. It doesn't do analysis. So analysis is why it happened, which is where visual website optimizer, VWO, crazy egg, Google Analytics to some degree helps. And then there is reporting where you say this happened. So you what happened, why it happened, and finally this happened. And for reporting, you will use Tableau, ClickSense, RJ Metrics, GA Sheet, you will use, use any one of them. And typically in reporting, you can you may you might also use uh, Tableau for drawing insights. Okay, um, but that happens much later. Okay, there are a lot of other tools like CleverTap. There is uh, there's a product called Amplitude, which is designed specifically for product uh, analytics. You will be listening uh, to an exclusive video uh, by Paul, who is a product manager at Amplitude on how to use Amplitude and how you can, as a product manager, leverage Amplitude. Similarly, you'll be uh, listening to uh, uh, Rishin from, uh, from CleverTap and also uh, from the product manager of WebEngage on how you can use WebEngage for engagement of your product. Rest, I will be covering in part two where we'll be doing a slight deep dive into web analytics, mobile analytics, Google analytics, web engage, amplitude in depth. Okay. That's it for now. Have a good time.